somehow I have entered into the candle making world. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Patrice and this is Craftable Things. If this is your first time here, please be sure to check out the other content. If you enjoy that content, please consider subscribing to my channel and also liking this video if it is interesting to you. For my returning subscribers and members, hey y'all, welcome back. So today we are going to be unboxing a DIY candle kit and Y'all, I'm kind of ashamed to say that I've had this candle making kit for maybe two years, maybe a little bit over two years actually, but I've had it for that long and I have not touched it. So today we are going to unbox it because I'm starting a new business venture and I'm including candles in the process. I love the different smells. I love diffusers. And so I wanted to include candles into my new projects and why not make them if you can, right? So that's what we're going to do. But we're going to unbox this DIY candle kit and we're going to see just how to set it up. So if you're interested in anything that I've used in this video, a link will be listed below in the description. Well, let's get started, y'all. All right, guys. So this is the box that we're going to be unboxing. It is a candle making kit, a DIY candle making kit from Craft Z. All right, so let's see what's in the box. We have quite a few things here in the box. We have some tens or jars for the candles. And we have different shapes. So we have, we have a circular shape. We also have a square shape with a clear top and this those are the different styles that we have so it comes with four candle jars of course we also have the instructions here right here on the side and inside of the instructions we have other material that we will use we have the wicks. We also have the, these are wooden sticks, but if you notice, there's like a hole here. And so I'm just assuming that when we get ready to place it inside of the candle, the wick will go like this, just to make sure that it's straight so that it's not falling all over the place. And I just want to look at the instructions a little bit. And of course we have inside um, a list of all the materials that's included, okay? We also have, okay, so we have some warning labels. They also include warning labels. I'm trying to see, oh, and then also inside of this pack, we have some glue dots and so these glue dots this is what will help make the wick stick to the bottom when we're pouring in the hot wax we also have a thermometer it comes with a thermometer we also have Right, we have inside of here there's about four bags of wax and we have our pouring pot it comes with the pouring pot and inside of the pouring pot we have candle dye or wax dye that we have we have red orange we have forest green and we also have, this is lavender. All right, so this is what we will use to color our, our wax. And then we have four different scents. So let's open this up and we'll see 
and we'll see what scent we have. So we have a cotton clean scent. And I'm just going to smell a little bit. Mmm, that smells good. Here we have a cotton clean scent, and this is fragrance oil. We also have lavender. And we also have a coconut lime. Mmm. Definitely smell the coconut. And then we have a... Alright, and then we have cinnamon and vanilla. And these all smell really good. So that's everything inside of the box. We're going to get ready and see if we can make a candle. All right, guys, to begin, I'm just going to place some parchment paper down just to help with the mess, if there is a mess. Next, we're going to get the pouring pot and then we are going to place one of the bags. Each bag is eight ounces and we're going to place one of the bags of wax inside of the pouring pot. All right, so I'm going to place this here next. Next, we're going to get our candle tin. And I think I want to use another candle tin. This is the one that came with the kit. However, for my tester, I still want to use something nice, right? So... I have this, and this came from Timu, and I think there was like a, maybe a box of 12 of these that I received, but I definitely want to maybe use this out. This kind of looks very similar in size. Yep, pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. So I will use this one instead. All right, and then we are going to get the wick and get our glue dot. And we're going to attach the wick to the bottom of the tin. So I'm just going to go ahead and place the glue dot onto the wick first. All right. And then we're going to stick it down inside. All right. And this is what will help us keep the wick in place. So I kind of just want to put it down kind of in the center. And then I'm just going to press down on it like that just to help it. And then we're going to Keep this just like this to help keep that wick into place. I'm going to set this to the side and we're going to get ready and head to the stove so that we can get our water boiling for our wax. So you want to make sure your water is boiling before you place your wax container inside. Get a pot that will hold your wax pot a lot better than I did. However, everything is still going well. So I'm just stirring the wax up as it's melting. They do provide wooden sticks inside of the kit for you to be able to do that. And I also have the thermometer inside because you want to make sure that your wax does not heat past 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I'm just stirring it up just to kind of get that wax moving. It starts to melt very, very quickly. So it is something that you want to monitor. This is not a long process, okay? And so I see right now we're getting close to the temp. And so I'm just making sure that it's mixed and all that wax is melted. And now that it's melted and at temperature at 180 degrees, I am now putting in one of the blocks of color. We're using purple today. And I am just going to go ahead and let that melt and stir that around. Once that is done, 
we're going to then remove it from the heat. Once everything is melted and smooth, we're going to remove it from the heat. And then we're going to head back to the table so that we can place the essential oil inside. All right, so now we're here and the instructions require us to pour the entire bottle, which is 30 ml or one ounces of the essential oil into the container. And it suggests that we do this away from the stove. So that's why we're now back at the table doing this. But you need to mix this really well so that the oil is... I guess mixed well with the wax and so that's what we're doing now I'm just waxing I'm just stirring this wax away because I want it to smell good right all right so now we're going to take the wax and we're going to pour it into the candle jars and I'm going to use two I don't know if this is meant for one candle jar but I am going to kind of place this or not kind of I am going to place this in two separate candle jars once everything's inside of the candle jars, you want to make sure that you set them aside and let them sit for at least 24 hours before doing anything else to them. All right, guys. So we are all done. Well, we let it sit. I'm going to remove the holder. And then I am going to take our heat gun and we're going to heat it up a little bit. So we're going to decorate our candles a little bit. I'm going to put a little glitter on top. And this is a biodegradable glitter, which is safe for the candles and burning them. So don't just put any glitter on top. It needs to be biodegradable. And I'm also going to put some dried flowers. All right, guys. So I'm just going to take this heat gun and just lightly heat up the top just to melt it a little bit so I can go ahead and apply the glitter I'm going to take it just to melt it up a little bit and I don't really want the side alright so I'm going to use our wick or our stick our wooden stick just to apply a little bit of the glitter. I kind of just want to not too much. All right, so now I'm going to take our flower and we're just going to just stick it down in the wax that we melted. And I'm also going to take some petals and just place it on the top. All right, guys, so everything is looking good with our candles. I love how they came out. Just remember to make sure that the dried leaves are away from the actual wick for when it starts to burn, but those look beautiful. All right, guys, so now we're inside of Cricut Design Space because I'm done with the candles, but I need a label. So I'm going to start by creating a circle, and this circle is pretty much based on the size of the candle jar top, and that's about three inches. I made that circle about two and a half inches. I don't want it to fill the entire size of the circle. And so I'm just uploading a design, which is just a logo in Cricut Design Space, and I'm going to resize it. Now, this design is an SVG, and it came in in several different parts. And so what I'm going to do is click onto each part, and I am going to weld those parts together. So craft is one part, 
bling is one part and A is one part of the design. So there's three different parts. So now I just want to go up to operations and begin to color the design to whatever color I want. That's why I really like working with SVGs when doing things like this in Cricut Design Space because you have more flexibility and control over your color choices or at least you don't have to waste too much time trying to get uh, access to the different layers and colors all right and so now I'm just making sure everything looks good and it does I went ahead and duplicated that circle because I want to actually create an offset around the circle so I want to create like a offset around the inner part and have that transparent and then the outer ring is going to be solid and so what I'm doing here now is I resize the circle and we are just going to slice so that I can get the exact look that I want to have and so I just went ahead and made that a little bit smaller and that looks great so now the new size of the label is about two and three quarters of an inch all right so I clicked onto the circle and I'm just changing the colors up and pulling in the image just to put it into the center of the circle all right and so for this particular label we're pretty much done I just want to make sure the color looks good and now I'm going to duplicate the design and we're going to go back to the first image we need to flatten that image and we're pretty much ready to print this out as a sticker okay but Cricut has a new Cricut sticker tool and we want to try that out and so for this one you can either create a die cut or a kiss cut and so what we're going to do the difference between the die cut is that the die cut is pretty much going to cut the sticker out completely the kiss cut is made to kind of like give it like a kiss cut or a slight cut and then you can just peel it off and we're, we want to do a kiss cut but I do want to create a, an offset around the the circle okay and so what we're going to do is select the border and we're going to put a very thin border around it all right and we are not going to fill it in with another color so but you can fill it in white or black whatever color you want okay so now we're going to get ready and send this to our Cricut machine all right and today we're going to be using the clear transparent printable final setting all right, guys, today we are going to be using our Epson Ecotank 15,000 to print out our labels. And I am using a transparent sticker paper. And it's printable vinyl sticker paper. It is transparent, clear. And this is the brand. I got this off of Amazon. And we are simply going to place the shiny side down in our printer. You just want to check the orientation of your printer, but for the printer that we're using today, this goes face down. And this printer has regular ink inside. Actually, this is pigment ink. So this is regular ink that you can use on printable vinyl or paper. It is a waterproof ink, All right? So let's get ready and everything is set. I'm just gonna close that and we're gonna get ready to print. All right, guys, so once your image is printed, you want to make sure that it's dry and it will come out still wet. So be very careful. You don't want to mess up those registration marks. So I would suggest either spraying some clear acrylic sealer on top or using some clear vinyl on top of it, depending on what you're going to be using it for. For today, we're just going to go ahead and go with it because these are some tester candles that I'm making. But you, if you plan on using these candles or giving them away, make sure you protect your image. All right, so now we're ready to place this onto our mat, and I'm just going to line this up in the corner so that we can get this cut. Well, actually, I'm gonna do printable vinyl transparent. And we're going to put that through. All right, guys, so if you find that your stickers or print thin cut projects aren't cutting correctly, you want to make sure that you calibrate your machine. However, we did not have a problem with that today. It's reading it perfectly, and our cuts were very much so spot on. So I'm happy about that. All right, guys, so it looks like it's done. It does look like it cut through. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get 
a weeding tool just to make sure that I can lift it up. And you might want to place some protective um, vinyl or something on top because I am scratching this up. All right, so the transparent sticker vinyl didn't work. So I'm just going to click play and it will cut it again for me. So this is a lesson. Always remember to check your cuts before you press the unload button because you can always push it right back through and it will cut in the exact same spot. Do not unload before checking. All right, so let me test this one and see if it cut it out. And hopefully it did. Okay, so it cut it out that time. It didn't need like two passes. I do want to make sure that you apply something like or let it dry or apply some acrylic sealer on top or also you can put another piece of laminate on top just to seal it but that's what we have all right guys so here we have our labels and just make sure that you put something on top just to protect them i went too quickly and of course I smeared some of that ink, but when I peel this part off the back, it all comes off pretty smoothly. So those two passes work best for this. So I use a printable vinyl transparent. Maybe next time when I use this setting, I will use more pressure. But let's go ahead and let's place these onto our tins. So this might come out a little bit lighter on here, but we're going to see. So I'm just gonna, gonna, and if you want, you could definitely use something to help you make sure that it's as straight as possible. So this is our label on top, but it looks like it might do well with a white label, but we went with transparent this time and it's okay. But that's just with a regular label. And then we're going to place the round sticker on top of that. Something like that. Okay, and then next we're going to just snip our wick. So you don't want to snip all the way down. You want to leave it up just a tad. And don't pull it. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. Now these scissors are probably not the best for it, but that's what we're using today. All right, y'all. So here we have our first candle, and I'm just going to put the top on top. And then we have our other hand candle, and that will go like this. So let's see how one of these will burn all right All right, y'all, so we are all done, and I am impressed with how this candle came out, how both of the candles came out. It smells great, and this is just the stuff from the candle kit. I'm really, really impressed with how easy it was to use. Everything was super, super easy. 
super easy. And I had this for two years and I hadn't touched it. And our candles came out perfect. So I absolutely love it. I'm super excited about incorporating candles into my business now and making more of these candles. So if you are interested in anything used today, please check out the description box. A link to everything that I use will be there. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join the Craftable Things communities there. But that's it for today, y'all. Thank you all so very much for watching. Until next time.